Hey guys, back again. Keith Busher, Art of Keith, uh, Art of Keith Busher, Precious Mutations, uh, Project uh, Skull Sconces. This is lesson number three. Yesterday we did the teeth. We sculpted a bit of the teeth, and we had the eyes. The day before that, we did the eyes and basically secured the skulls to the sconce itself, as you can see here. Uh, the sconce itself twists apart, so I can take the little pieces. That's good. Um, the reason I didn't go beyond sculpting the teeth and adding the lips was A, because we didn't want to mash the teeth that we had just finished sculpting. But I could have gone on and done the chin and the bottom lip, but I decided not to because, for me, the next step of the process is actually um, adding some paint. Because later on, once you've added on the lips, the nose, the chin, um, eyelids, those sorts of things, it can be really hard to kind of get some of the details into the eyes and the teeth that you want to get to make them look a little more realistic. So um, before I go on sculpting, I like to make sure that I've painted the under pieces first. So today, you will see the many layers of paint that I like to add. Again, I've told you before I'm OCD and I still am. So for the teeth, we are going to require uh, raw umber as a base. And then we have some yellow ochre, deep yellow ochre. Um, that kind of gives the teeth a bit of staining and grossness, blends well with the brown. We have unbleached titanium. I try to avoid when I can using like pure whites or pure blacks um, just because unbleached titanium kind of looks like teeth, but also nobody's teeth are like white, white, like pure white as you get them in the store. Everybody's got a little bit of coloration to their teeth, a little bit of staining, you know, and black. You know, it's great for negative space, but there's always a varying color in there somewhere. There's just a deep version of a color, which is why we use the brown, which is why I use the brown instead of the black. Um, other colors that we are going to, to use, I'm going to use a bit of this to help out with the gums and the eyes and um, some light peach that also helps out with the gums. And I do have some titanium white because we will do a bit of dry brushing on the teeth if I can get to that point because sometimes we got to wait for stuff to dry. We will use a little bit of titanium white, um, just a hint of it dry brushing the teeth to give highlights, to give the illusion of like reflection or highlights. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to, um, these are supposed to be dead heads right so it's going to be um the heads are, or the eyes are going to be a little bit distressed they're not going to be straight up eyes or anything so i'm going to take my Alzerian crimson and a little tiny dab i use such little paint you can use your choice of paint and which manufacturer is totally up to you whatever your preference is um I know it's intimidating when you start a project to look at some of the prices of the paints and stuff like that and say, oh, wow, that's like a super expensive paint. But look how much little paint, and I'm not even going to use like half of this doing what I'm doing today. So realistically, you know, the amount of money that you're spending per product on paint, it's just that initial investment. So I really, really water it down. I'll get my brush super wet because I don't want the eyes to be super white or super red, I mean. I just want them to look like not super white. You know what I mean? I want them to look like maybe he asphyxiated or something along those lines. So I'm gonna add a bit of just red to stain it. Now these are very small eyes, so this is what I do with these eyes. If you add too much, just wet your brush again and kind of rinse it off, right? And then just wash it off while it's still wet. Um, another technique that I have with eyes, these are small eyes. Like in comparison to my thumbnail, you see how tiny these eyes are. Um, 
I don't. So I'll, I'll just use red paint because trying to paint veins and things in something this tiny, you just never, uh, I don't know. I can never get it right. I can never get it to look like the way I want it to look personally. You might be all right with it, but for me, um, they just always come out too thick. They come out, you know, if you look at the veins in your own eyes, they're very, very thin. And your eyes are big. These are tiny. And if you painted veins on them in relation to the size of the actual head, those veins would be super thick. So, okay. So we've just done a bit of a red wash to the eyes so that they look like they're kind of distressed. Okay. Now the teeth, while we're waiting for the eyes to dry, we are going to take our raw umber. Happy little accidents. And same thing, just a tiny, tiny, tiny little mount of it. Little tiny dab right there. About the size of my fingernail. Not much in there at all. Same brush, just a, a where is it? Just a broad brush, a nice soft brush. And I'm gonna get the paint nice and wet. Cause ba what wetting it does, I'm sure a lot of you know this already and I'm just being redundant. I'm just trying to cover all the bases for all levels. But getting the paint really wet is good for, it's good for a wash, but it also runs the paint into the cracks, right? Like when it, when the water, it's going to try and find the lowest point. So I don't want the teeth to all be brown. I just want to paint the cracks, but instead of getting a really fine brush and trying to paint those cracks, I'll let the water do the work for me by getting some paint really wet and just going over it with a wash and see how it, sorry, it's really close. And see how it just fills in those cracks there. Doesn't stay on the teeth because it's so wet. I'm gonna use brighter colors to highlight the teeth, but it just soaks right into where the gum line is where your gum line would have been. Again, if you put too much on and it starts to look like the tooth is brown or anything like that, you can just wet your brush again. At this point, we're still gonna be doing the gums and everything, so don't worry about, you know, making it perfect. You can overpaint. But I'm not using black, I'm using brown, because blood and things like that, when they dry, they tend to be more brown, they're not black. So the brown works better when you're adding reds and stuff later because it makes for a more natural transition. And a lot of these acrylic paints actually dry pretty quick, so that's good. All right, so we've done a quick wash of the teeth. You can always go back and add a little more. If you go too soon, you'll end up pulling the paint off. So, you know, the P word again, you gotta have some patience, but uh, the other thing is too, once you're done all your highlights and stuff, you can go over it with another wash and get those cracks if you've accidentally filled in any of those cracks or anything. So, yeah, so let's take a look. I'm trying to get my arm out of the light there. So there, now we're already starting to see more depth. Some of the little lines I put in the teeth and stuff like that. The gums. Remember we put the little marks in the gums and stuff like that. The eyes are looking a little red and beat up. Okay. So that's good. So we're done for the moment with the black, with the dark brown. I'm going to blow on this a little bit just to kind of get some of it to dry up a little bit faster because I don't have a ton of time today. I got to go to work again. I did get some really cool, exciting news. Um, I can't share it with you yet because I'm still talking about it, but uh, it could be really neat, actually. And I'm thinking of starting up a YouTube channel doing similar tutorials on uh, different projects. I have a bunch of uh, bowling pins. I want to make one into a vulture possibly a phoenix. Uh, 
Uh, I have a giant fish tank that I want to do another piece with, and they're they're pretty big pieces. I'm used to doing a lot of very small pieces for shows and stuff, but right now I want to do some big pieces for me. I've done a lot of show pieces. I don't have a show for a little while. If you're in the Hamilton slash Niagara Falls slash Toronto area, I'm doing Frightmare in the Falls, but that's not until October, and that's in Niagara Falls. That's a really cool 18 plus horror show. They always get lots of celebrities and uh, some really, really cool, neat artists there. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do, oh, I just said I never use black and I need black. So give me one sec, I gotta grab a black. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about that. Sorry. 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 Canadian. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. All right. I'm back. Um. So, the next thing that we need to do, that I want to do, when I'm building the eyes, I want to build from the back out. I do a lot of layers on the eyes. Um, some people say it's a little bit too much unnecessary, but again, I love details and I love making things look good. And I'm not saying that other people's stuff doesn't look good. I'm just saying this works for me. So I'm actually going to take a sculpting tool for this, a nice little round sculpting tool. A lot of people, and I did when I started too, um would do the pupil last so you paint all the color in the eyes and then you add that little black dot in the middle because it makes sense and it's easier that way but so i'm just using this little sculpting tool and i'm putting the pupil on the eye trying to keep it as round as possible starting to see some caricature here Sculpting is great, but painting really brings pieces to life. I've had pieces where I'm like, oh, this is going to be terrible. And then as soon as you start adding the paint, which is not necessarily my forte, as soon as you start adding the paint, the piece really, you're like, oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, anyway, as I was saying, a lot of people like to put the pupil in last, but if you look at your own eye, your pupil is actually behind everything else. So I'm going to show you kind of a technique. I'm sure it's not a new technique, but it's one that I learned through trial and error. Again, just washing the paint off. <clears throat> Clean your tools the best you can. I'm going to add a bit of brown again because it looks like some of the teeth is... If you make it too watery, it'll run out. So just add a bit more. The water will run if you don't let it dry and stuff. So we just add a bit more. Not the end of the wall. Anyway, back to the eyes. If you look, the black is actually at the back of your eye. Your pupil is at the back of your eye, and then the color comes forward. So the technique that I have, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to show you entirely today, is that um, it's, a, it's a bit of a long process. So now I've done a wash. I've done the black dot. What I'm going to do, and I, I got the idea from this from an online video um, where people have done 3D painting of fish and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this black dry, and then I'm going to coat it with a very thick gloss. I use triple thick gloss. Um, right now I have a Deco Art uh, DuraClean gloss varnish. So I'm going to put that over top of the eye. Then I'm going to paint the back color, which would be the dark color. So if you were painting green eyes or something, you would want a dark green in the back. And then I'm going to do another coat of gloss and then a lighter kind of just a hint wash, like flecks of color in it to give the eyes a little bit more. And then you do another layer. And what that does is it puts a thick layer between the paints and it's subtle, but it's subtle, but um, it really gives a 3D effect and it brings the eyes to life. Um, 
the teeth, I'm just going to kind of do um, a wash over it. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to add the three layers of color. I don't put gloss in between because I don't want the teeth to be that three dimensional. And then I'm going to put the gloss on after because teeth always kind of look wet. Uh, so that's that part there. And I'm going to add, so my next step for the teeth is I'm going to take yellow ochre deep and I'm going to do a little bit because again I think that color kind of looks like grimy oh I grabbed the wrong one I have two tubes of this and one of them is like lumpy and chalky and gross and apparently that's the one that I grabbed I'm new at these videos I'm not very good so one good thing is I always have a wide variety of brushes and things to use. So I'm going to use a finer brush, a little bit more detail on this brush. This one is a number two, number two round, I think. Not quite round, but oh, there we go. Okay, and I'm just going to gum these teeth up, up near the gums. We still have our brown line. We're going to put a couple more layers of paint on it, so we don't need to worry too much about over, over painting them or anything. So we're just going to gum up those teeth again. Right. And gum them up a bit. Gunk, gunk. Wash really isn't staying in. Normally I'll leave this sit for like five minutes or so, but I'm trying to let, I'm trying to kind of show you guys. So that's why the wash is kind of coming out as I, as I do it. The top one seems to be all right, but the bottom one, but we're going to add brown wash again at the end before we put our glaze on and that will help it out a lot. All right. Oh. Always have paper towels on hand so you don't wipe your paintbrush on your pant leg like I just did and ruin another pair of pants. Everything I own has paint on it. I wear it like a badge. So there we go. We got some griming up of the teeth. I'll blow on it a little bit to get it to dry a little bit. Kind of going back and forth between the eyes and the now the gloss, the thing about the gloss is you have to be really careful because if you put it on before your paint dries, um, oops, sorry, um, if you put your gloss on before your paint dries, you run the risk of just wiping your paint right off of it. Um, a good way to kind of avoid that a little bit um, is you can just drip the gloss right on the eyeball. I'll try and do that in this situation here. But these are very small eyeballs, so it can be tricky. Bloop. 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 Missed with that one. Bloop. Okay. So then you take an old crappy brush that you don't like anymore. Just be very careful not to wash off all the stuff you already put on and just kind of spread that around. Don't put it on super, super thick or you will run into other problems. Okay, see it's trying to take the red out. But that's kind of cool too because it smears it around a little bit. 
But you see, I'm trying to avoid the pupil because if I hit the pupil, I might slide the pupil right off the eye. I've had that done before doing Christmas ornaments and stuff like that. That's very annoying. And the other thing about gloss is you don't want to overwork it. If you overwork it, it can cause it can cause issues as well. All right. So we added some gloss. <clears throat> Hopefully that will dry relatively quickly. I'm going to try doing a bit more of the brown wash over this over these teeth. Hopefully I'm not going to wash that yellowish ochre color away. No, we're doing all right. So I'm just like, like I said, I'm just letting the water do the work. So I'm almost just like dabbing it in there and letting it find the cracks. And it just helps give a bit of depth and definition to the teeth, where the teeth break, where the teeth split. I am taking a bit of that paint off. This bottom skull doesn't want to cooperate at all. Okay. 21 minutes already. Wow. Doing these tutorials has been actually quite helpful for me because I've never actually timed how long it takes me to do things, but now we're starting to see... I'm starting to see how much time I actually put into it. And it's... Uh, it's eye-opening. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here because like I said, we're already at 20 minutes and I'm going to let things dry because I don't, I don't want to sit here and, and yammer on at you guys. And tomorrow I got to go to work as well in 20 minutes. Um, tomorrow, uh, I will show you how I dry brush on the teeth and stuff like that. And then hopefully I'll have a little bit more time on my hands that I can also, um, start sculpting some of the lips or the nose or the head or anything like that. All right. Thanks again for watching, guys. Um, please leave comments below what you think, if there was anything that uh, you wanted to see more of, anything that you want to know more about. Am I being too boring? Am I too monotone? Do you want more excitement? Do you want a theme song? I'm not a good singer. Um, let me know, and I will keep you posted as to whether or not I'm opening that YouTube page and when I'm opening that YouTube page and all that fun stuff, too. So until then, have a good one.